Everybody, it's Tyler here at the Wisconsin Regional, checking team number 4786, Nicolay Fear, uh, a team I've had my eyes on for many years here uh, out of Wisconsin, and it's just kind of been rising through the ranks throughout the years. And uh, you got to check out your robot, but first off, to help me out with that, I have Marshall, Angelo, and Z. And coming through this robot here, they've had a very uh, consistent scoring machine, but even more consistent is their climber that's been great for them so far. So can't wait to talk more about what's going in this robot, all here coming up on Behind the Bumpers. Your destination for first content, updates, and gaming. Welcome, Welcome to the fun. First updates now is supported by Kettering University. If you want to continue enjoying the excitement of robotics, come check out what's going on at Kettering University, including their combat battle bots team and first center. Turn your robotics experience into a professional career. Be sure to apply to Kettering beginning in August of 2022. Go to kettering.edu slash apply to learn more. Marshall, we're going to start out uh, talking about the cargo journey. Take me through your intake, maybe some of the iterations. You guys have already had a regional under your belt as well, too. So any changes that have been made throughout the season on that? Okay. So this iteration of our intake was heavily inspired by Spectrum and their work with the Open Alliance um, online. So if you want to deploy it now, you'll see it sort of flops down at the start of a match. And if you want to bring down the main bar as well, hopefully in a second here. Great. So we sort of got this top set of rollers here and then this static bottom roller that rests just above the floor. And that works with this set of polyurethane belts here to help intake. We have, you know, standard over bumper um, intake. So if you want to run a cargo through that really quickly, sometimes there are issues on the cart. Perfect. So uh, it's been really reliable for us. An earlier iteration, we actually had a linear door slide uh, to extend it, but we had some issues with uh, a lack of sort of compliance. Um, and it was also sort of harder to maintain. So this uh, served to be a valuable um, iteration sort of halfway through the season. So on your intake here, uh, what made you want to use that, that bottom bar there? We see some teams are just doing like an yep. over the bumper without the bar. Are you finding that's really helping you out a lot? We have, so it, it might just probably just a difference in design. Sure. Uh, this helps us just get consistent compression between the ball and these uh, two sets of rollers here. Uh, it, especially as an over the bumper intake, uh, just to make, make sure we have that you know, consistent pipeline for our cargo to flow through. Uh, for your indexing as you come through, are there any sensors that, that go into that that use like the tech cargo or anything like that at all? Not currently. We had been playing around with a set of limit switches at one point, and we'd also been using our line light to color detect. Uh, we sort of had some code issues and sure. other implementation things, so that sort of got phased out over time, and uh, we haven't had a, any huge hits from that either. Well, your team has a very beefy shooter, right? You got a couple of Neos that are running it, so you're yeah. going to get a lot of uh, torque coming out of that. Colson wheels are heavy as well, too. Yep. Uh, so you're going to get a lot of power coming out of that. Talk to me a little bit more about uh, what's gone into that and thinking about from like the cargo coming through, uh, where are you shooting on the field? Kind of what's your sweet spot as well? Yeah, so our sweet spot is, I mean, start with that, just outside of the cargo ring, so maybe three to four um, outside of the tarmac line. Uh, set of, we, the Colson wheels were actually an, an upgrade after our first regional. We had a set of green compliant wheels, um, but we changed those out for the Colsons for more consistency with our launcher, and we've seen um, some good improvements from that. We also, both sets of wheels are run independently, and that's actually helped us get better spin on our cargo to reduce any odds of bouncing out of the upper hub. So you have another Neo actually par t uh, powering the other one as well? Yeah, so this Neo here powers this top roller. Gotcha. And then this uh, Neo actually hidden sort of under this bottom roller, um, all in line, uh, that powers the bottom one independently. So we, we get that extra uh, motor output there. Your climber has been very reliable as we go through. So we're going to bring in uh, Angelo and Z to talk a little bit more. Angelo is going to talk about more of the mechanical aspect that's gone into it, why you chose to go that route. And then Z is going to give us a climber demonstration as well, too. So tell us a little bit more about it. Sure, yeah. So our climbing system uses two sets of climbers. One. Um, this first set is the Andy Mark climber in a box. We actually modified to rotate. So if you like to run that and rotate up. So we can deploy those up. Um, and then these two are our stationary arms that we custom made. Um, we designed these hooks to collapse down when, when impacted by the, the high bar and then release back up and then clip onto the high bar. And then we rotate these arms and extend up to the traversal bar where we can climb um, in about 20 seconds to that traversal bar. Well, it's been very reliable for you. Uh, let's hand it over to Z, who's going to take through step by step, and we'll see the climber deploy. Walk me through it, Z, on the microphone as we go through it a bit more. 
Yeah, so for our climber, our first step is what we call the prepare step. So it brings these up, brings our intake up and lifts this up. It gets underneath the low bar and we uh, climb right onto the mid bar to start out with. Next up, we do what's called a chin up. So we bring this down, which get, brings the bar down here, lets us snap onto our static arms, and then we start uh, to move our anti-mark climber into boxes above the bar. Then we do our next bar phase, which is where we extend them and bring the climbers to their full height. That way we can reach the next bar pretty easily. And then we use, at the end, a command for traversal that just brings us up without letting these back down. Well, Nick Lee, Fear 4786, uh, your team has looked great to me here so far. Good improvements to you looking from each event. You've had a pretty tough math schedule, I know, as we go through, but your UAS has been performing at a great level, so can't wait to see uh, how you perform going in the playoffs. We wish you best of luck here at this event, and can't wait to see how you do. Thanks a lot. Yeah, thank, you. thank you. Thanks to Kettering University for their support of this video. If you want to continue enjoying the excitement of robotics, come check out what's going on at Kettering University, including their Combat BattleBots team and First Center. Turn your robotics experience into a professional career. Be sure to apply to Kettering beginning in August of 2022. Go to kettering.edu apply to learn more. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.